Всем привет, меня зовут Лев Лейман, и я прилетел в Канаду для того, чтобы взять интервью у ребят из Soda Network. Это крутой проект, который будет помогать мне делать одежду и фигачить что-то наподобие социального майнинга. Увидим, как это будет. So today we are the Saliba, co-author of Toda Protocol and CEO of Toda Network. So please explain uh, step by step what is the TCP IP level, what is the Toda Protocol. And it is hard to understand everything and uh, so let's try to see the picture in whole. So sure. ju just from a um, short introdu introduction of yourself okay. and then about technology. My name is Tufi Saliba and I've been uh, in crypto and AI since 2001. It's been pretty much my entire career focus. What attracts me the most about the technology is uh, how it can add value uh, to uh, people's life while it can drive a lot of uh, businesses uh, forward, including my own businesses. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a combination of having uh, altruism uh, with uh, greed, fear and need. So uh, when it comes to um, AI, it's very uh, probabilistic. Crypto is very uh, deterministic. And uh, many folks, they talk about bringing, for example, AI into the blockchain. Uh, I think we need to bring more bl blockchain technology into AI. That's my view of things, at least at first. Now, um, how I uh, got my career started uh, in 2001, like I said, I've had 15 startups that I built. 11 of them failed, four mm -hmm. of them succeeded. Whatever success means is often measured by when folks put in certain amount of money and they get 10x, 20x, 30x their money. Is it all the folks they put in? Definitely not. But whatever uh, um, amount to that uh, kind of uh, exit is usually considered success objectively. Um, with uh, the fascination around blockchain is about uh, what, it, what it can deliver to humanity. The promises around the blockchain, uh, they're, they're very hard to pass on. Like if you look at all the promises over the last three to four years, many folks, they talk about the blockchain. If you can simply Google the promise of the blockchain, you can find out uh, or, or Yandex or whatever, uh, you know, um, you use as a search engine, you're able to find uh, phenomenal promises. But when we look at the existing uh, state of the blockchain, what it has proven is that there's a lot of demand. But did it prove that technologically there's a supply? And the answer is no. Objectively speaking, it's no. Mm -hmm. Many people, they talk about, or they admit to it now, that the scalability is a problem. Uh, Dan Tolliver, my co-author, and I, we've uh, been struggling dealing with folks trying to convince them that there is a scalability problem years ago, and then efficiency, and uh, security, and so on and so forth. So it is not a new idea, yeah? It is, uh, you, you're starting to think about it in those days when you get know about blockchain. First time we actually called it though, that was about three years ago. Mm -hmm. It was around the time, uh, or a little bit less even. But there, there was some work that uh, carried off over the years until that moment. The name Toda is actually funny. In Hebrew, it means thank you. In Spanish, it means everything. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of meanings in a lot of uh, different uh, languages. And there's actually something that is called Toda Chains that has been going around since the 60s. And it's something different than what we mean by the Toda mm -hmm. Chain here. Um, it's a little bit more about the crystal. It's in, basically if, you, if you get into chemistry and yeah. physics and all that, then you get to understand it a little bit better. So ah, it's, it's like it's, on your side, it's like uh, a bit like a chemical uh, connections or it's... I mean, there's nothing. always like we try to mimic nature. And if you look at the current blockchain, um, it wasn't mimicking nature. It was mimicking a previous system that worked really well. And it's like centralized databases, but taking that and replicating it across many mm -hmm. uh, ledgers. And that's that model started with Bitcoin nine and a half years ago. So many folks would tell you that like the, the blockchain revolution is more like the World Wide Web. But if you measure the reality of things, in some my opinion, nine and a half years after HTTP came to exist, which is a protocol that enabled World yeah. Wide Web, uh, it had over 20% of global penetration. With the blockchain, we have less than 0.2%. Mm -hmm. So those are facts. And the reason why I'm stating those facts is because when there's a problem that we, we all see that it's a fabulous technology, but we see that, you know, a similar fabulous technology made a hundred times more penetration, yeah. then we know that there's a gap. Um, is the gap because uh, the people, they're not smart enough working on it? 
We don't think so. We think they're phenomenal, intelligent people working on it. But if you today, in 2018 or even in 2020, if you were to hire 70 top scientists, aerospace scientists, and get them to fly a cruise boat, mm -hmm. see what happens. They might spend two years, three years. Um, but if you get only two of them, get them to fly an airplane, they'll be able to. So the design elements of something, if it doesn't enable it to get to the promised land, we can't blame the smart, intelligent people. It's more like the design. So we're trying to bring in our piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. to the entire market, to the entire globe, and saying, hey, guys, there's a d different design. TCP IP is what you're relying on today. It's not like you're building your blockchain, whether it is Ethereum or Dash or whatever it is that you're actually building it on. Yeah, it's like Air. Copis. It's like Copis of uh, blockchain. It is we, we have Bitcoin for what we should have more Bitcoins. But, but they're, they're all being built on TCP IP today. Mm -hmm. But TCP IP is not enabled to transmit value by design, mm -hmm. and that's why I end up with a replicated ledger. If we give you an equivalent to what TCP IP gives you, but it's able to transmit value at the packet level, at the network level, then you don't need to have to replicate ledger. And that's what we're trying to actually bring forward. But, you know, you get a lot of uh, folks that they resist this kind of things because they've invested a lot of emotions, ego, money, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But the smart ones that we're getting uh, to, to come in and join us, they feel like Tora is not a threat to them. They see it as an opportunity. So we're getting a lot of folks to come in and join us and starting to uh, look at how they can take this technology and make it uh, mainstream rather than just focus on the 0.2%. We're not really concerned about that. We're focused on about the 99.3%. Mm -hmm. That's the one that matter at the end of the day. If we're stuck with our 0.2%, oh, this crypto chain is better than that, whatever, you know, there's 1400 blockchains, whichever one is better, I don't know. But what I can tell you with certainty, what they all sit on can be done better. And that's what we're doing. Could you describe, could we go more deeper in description of TCP IP level? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that everyone knows that it is like level of internet communication packages, transmission, mm -hmm. yeah, transferring. Yes. And you want to make uh, identification for them. Basically, uh, TCP IP uh, in a network topology, they're considered the layer three and layer four. Yeah. Okay, layer three is like the IP, TCP is layer four. Uh, now, when it comes to blockchain terminology, they refer to it as like, well, if Bitcoin is layer one and Lightning Network is layer two, therefore anything below that is layer zero. So a lot of folks start talking about Toda, the layer zero, some of them the invisible layer or whatnot. But effectively, it would be occupying a space layer three and four in a network topology around there. Mm -hmm. In the current implementation that we've had running for about 14 months successfully, it runs on TCPIP. But with version two that we're giving to the world and we're giving it to the Tri Foundation and everybody can eventually be use it for, using it for free, is on that same uh, level as the TCP IP. So you're, you can continue doing a lot of stuff at, on TCP IP when you're on a stream video or whatnot. But if you want to build technology that can manage and transmit value, basically a blockchain, mm -hmm. maybe you want to consider something different than TCP IP so you don't have to have a replicated ledger and have a lot of dependencies and have men in the middle. And uh, we summarize them in five uh, most important or necessary elements for every successful blockchain company. Uh, it starts with security. Mm -hmm. So why do I say start with security? A lot of people, they tell you, hey, we're, talk we're working about scalability. But guess what? If you don't have security, you don't want scalability. And decentralization is a security model. So decentralization is not some sort of coup d'etat. It's like trying to go, no, decentralization is a security model. It is like a so, model of uh, uh, decentralized government. But, uh, decentralized governance, um, basically in a, in a BFT, Byzantine Fault Tolerance uh, system, is a security model where it prevents an attack from within or s attack from a central mm -hmm. um, point of failure or even notes in the system that they could be malicious to kind of take mm -hmm. over the system okay so if you take that in consideration what does it represent in the grand scheme of things that's a security how secure is that system is so if it's not decentralized if folks they come in and show you lev i'm going to talk about 99 points of decentralization in my system but if there's still one point of attack 
that is centralized, they control it, they manage it, their mom, their dad, somebody, defeats the purpose. 99, they don't matter anymore. There's a saying in security, you're as good as your weakest link. Mm -hmm. And with this one, you're as good as your centralized point. So and it's like, how, how you obtain it, how, how you reach it. I so, mean, what so, so that's like, I'm talking about like the actual security yeah. uh, on its own. So you need to maintain the actual security. That's, that's number one. Yeah. Security is number one. Efficiency is number two. And again, before scalability, you need to have an efficient system. And efficiency is usually measured in comparison to something else. Okay. So if I were to uh, give you an ownership of something and it's a piece of paper, if I were to deliver a letter to you and that's more efficient than an email, I'm going to give it to you. If I were to transmit a bunch of cash to you, it's more efficient than sending you Bitcoin transactions or not, I'm going to do it that way. Uh, so if there's a different method for people to do it, your system will fail. Mm -hmm. Your system needs to be not more efficient, 20%, more efficiency, that's like, uh, that's not revolutionary, okay? What do you mean when you talk about efficiency? So compare it mail to email, for example. Mm -hmm. Email was like at least 99% more efficient than mail. Mm -hmm. That was revolutionary. Mm -hmm. Okay. World Wide Web in comparison to like a press and, well, uh, you know, I, sending. Is it speed or it is the cost of transaction? Well, uh, I mean, the if, uh, how efficient uh, is it to, if I were to take a system and move uh, an element from point A to point B, yeah. uh, it's going to cause some friction. There isn't anything that's going to come at zero cost. One thing is going to come at, let's say, it's going to cost you, let's say, $100, yeah, and it's going to cost you 0 0.01. Uh, if it's measured in dollars, yeah. if it's measured in uh, ruble or um, yen or whatever you want to measure it with, or uh, at the end of the day, uh, money is a representation of a certain thing that could be energy. So uh, f for, for those that they like uh, physics a lot, think of it as uh, friction versus less friction. And that's what we mean by efficiency. So, um, so you need to be truly like efficient from the perspective the efficiency has to be at least 99 percent better otherwise it's not going to be revolutionary it's just going to be oh you know it's an evolutionary step for some model that existed before and that's the the understanding of blockchain in most financial organizations today they think it's like just an evolutionary thing they don't necessarily take it as a revolutionary is going to change the entire infrastructure mm -hmm. Okay, so, but that's because of some weaknesses in, in, in the current replicated ledger and all that. So that's number two. Number three is confidentiality. There is no business that's going to be successful if it doesn't have confidentiality by design. If you add the confidentiality layer, it means you're adding to the cost. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need to have confidentiality, otherwise you're not going to be able to succeed. And then comes the scalability. So scalability is number four. So I repeat them. Security, efficiency, confidentiality, and then scalability. If you have those three, then you definitely need the scalability. You want the, your system to scale. Now, what happens when you have all of those four things and you cannot have an exchange between one system to another? I want to have my own blockchain. That also has its own mm -hmm. blockchain. John, Dan, you know, uh, everybody wants to have their own blockchain. How would I exchange? Oh, my users, how would they exchange between value that they have in mind and yours? Going to exchangers. And that goes back to square one. Yeah. That is a huge problem. Or to se second, so, because efficiency. Uh, what's that? Uh, or to second. To, to we we got into efficiency, it's also security, into like uh, all of those. Like yeah. it, it, it gets you back into like, so, so I get back to square one, basically. It's like... Um, it's not so secure, yeah, when you it is third party and yeah. It, it literally go, takes you back to square one, yeah. as if you don't have anything. It's like, a, so if you have all of those four and then it's not interoperable by design, mm -hmm. if you have to depend on a third party, I don't care what that third party called themselves, decentralized exchange, well, if it's a decentralized exchange and to Lev and I, we need to use a third party every time that is a decentralized exchange, that's not really decentralized. That's yeah, not peer to peer. Yeah. We have know? central part. That's right. That's right. So it's extremely important to actually have interoperability by design into the system. Um, and uh, what we, the quest of Tora is to provide all of those uh, five to anybody who wants to build the de like deployment or implementations of their own uh, blockchain. So it's more like a network uh, protocol. Uh, there's TCP IP. We can continue using it if you want. We're going to continue doing replicated ledger. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, build a boat, great. Just don't expect your engineers is going to fly it. But if you want airplanes, 
perhaps you want to use soda. So it depends what you want to accomplish. I mean, uh, so, so it's very hard to uh, put them one against the other because they're not the same. The airplane, you don't compare airplane to the boat. The boat, you can ship huge shipments or whatnot. You can still depend on boats. When airplanes came to exist, we didn't like get rid of boats. They still have certain function. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly, we would all agree that the majority of people on the planet, they use airplanes to travel and not boats. And so we're trying to provide foundational layer for folks to. So, so again, it is not it is not blockchain, Tora. Yeah, it's not blockchain. It, it, it is it's protocol. More, it's more a network protocol. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, now it uses a lot of the blockchain uh, technology and the network technology. The cutting, like the, the all the stuff that is learned from blockchain, AI, um, network, trying to put them together mm -hmm. and then provide the folks with a system that can work. The innovation of Tora itself is more how you kind of put the pieces together. Each and every element of Tora is not an innovation. It's things that have been built before and, and proven by other uh, systems. Yeah. So it's the design that actually matters. And when it comes to engineering, sometimes there's some engineering uh, challenges and some uh, methods to ensure that uh, the system works. Um, and you would require certain innovation and algorithm, for example, to build a huge, uh, you know, distributed and decentralized uh, Merkle, uh, mm -hmm. you know, tree. And uh, there's things that you want to ensure that the nodes, each and every user in Tora is, uh, um, is a node. Is a, is, is a node. There yeah. is no separation between nodes and users. Mm -hmm. there, there never needs to be that separation. You don't want a system to have a separation. You'll start like dropping from decentralization to more centralization eventually because the nodes, they don't necessarily have the same incentive as uh, the users. And those one who confirm the transaction is also like a node and also like a user. Yeah, it's not like... That's right. Yeah. If you are part of the system, the same way if you are part of TCP IP, your system is working TCP IP. It's always doing some work. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm able to do DDoS attack on your system and whatnot. So uh, when you're a part of Dota, Toda, uh, we're calling it Toda-T, mm -hmm. the actual standard, you end up with a situation where you have your node is always doing some work. Uh, now that work, why would your system would want to do some work is because... First, there's something that's called crypto economy that you're incentivized to, to be part of the, the system. And second, the, 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 uh, if you want to do the exchange yourself or whatnot, you would need to be part of the system to, to do that. So those, so those are the two reasons. Now, the best comparison I would give it to what would Bitcoin on Toda look like? Because many people in the space understand Bitcoin. Um, you take each and every Satoshi. I'm not in the liberty to discuss a lot about that specific implementation. When the time comes and folks are ready, they will be uh, discussing it. But the intent here is to benefit the entire community. So folks that they are in the mining industry might see it as a threat. Oh, shit, so we're not going to be able to do mining. But guess what, brother? Do you want to continue doing all the mining so then your Bitcoin continue being $6,000, maybe 10000 Or do you want to sit back on whatever Bitcoin you have and each and every Satoshi is equal $1? Each and every Bitcoin could be equal $100 million. Is that possible in the current model? Give it to grade one or grade 10, I should say, <laughs> mathematician, they're able to prove it that it's not possible in the current model. So we're trying to provide a model that can be possible. So if you think about it this way, each and every Satoshi can be a network packet as being transmitted across the network. It changes the ownership and it impacts something that is global every single time to prevent double spend. So, so yeah, so with that, uh, you don't have to depend on a ledger, but you're yeah, able and, to have... And uh, so, sorry, more here, it is like, it looks like uh, each token is unique because each Correct. packet of information Correct. is unique. Correct. So the comparison to TCP IP here again is like in TCP IP, the packets are not unique, but they carry the IP, which is unique yeah. and yeah, yeah. globally. And, or, and hash. Or. With that, you have the actual, each and every packet has a unique number ah, universally. Yeah. And yes. each and every uh, device is kind of like IP as well. So you end up with uh, the packet is always owned by a single device at any given time and not more than one device. Yeah. It cannot be owned by more than one device. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you get to finality in 60 seconds currently in uh, Tora. Uh, and if you think about it, uh, how can that scale? The first time we talked about our projection of scale, we said, hey, we're able to get to 
3 million transactions per second. Everybody's like, whoa, this is so much grandiose. Well, let me tell you facts, okay? With 800 devices running Toda globally today, uh, no matter how bad the network is, the throughput is about 60 transactions per minute. Mm -hmm. That's one transaction per second. That's inferior to any existing blockchain globally. But that design, if you have 800,000 users, you're able to get 60,000 transactions per minute and so on and so forth. So back to uh, Bitcoin. So for example, if you were to have 20 million users currently on Bitcoin, there would be 20 million running the system. Yeah, it will be less. So you end up uh, getting a throughput of 24,000 transactions per second. Mm -hmm. That throughput can actually take it global. That can take it mainstream. Mm -hmm. The problem that I talk about initially of this talk, 0.2% is the global penetration. How can we take that to make it 20%? We do our part. The listener of this video can do their part. Or they can just sit back and be skeptical. Whichever way they do it, we're continuing and we're going to deliver it. And it's going to happen. So those that they see it as an opportunity end up partnering with us. And we see it as an opportunity. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, we're trying to bring an added value to every single mm -hmm. homo sapien. Am I right that uh, each token is unique and also each token is like a wallet? Or not like, it's like, no, not like, um, do you have unique wallet? Unique wallet yes, for this? Yes, so, so it if like you want, I can talk a little bit about the actual data structure of Tora. So <laughs> imagine a binary tree of 256 levels. Yeah. Okay. So for the listeners, if they don't know what binary tree is, you can go to Yandex or Google or um, Bing or whatever, what you use as a search engine. A neighbor in Korea and then put in binary tree and then you see like the, the, there's like a root and there's two and two, mm -hmm. and two so if you imagine 256 levels easy for every homo sapien to imagine that the other cool thing about this is like easy for any device even from the 70s to traverse that tree if it's structured in a way that it's like a, a fully saturated binary search tree. So you're able to go like, this is the child, go to the parent, go to the parent. But it's impossible for all the computers on the planet today combined to actually create that tree. Mm -hmm. That tree on level 160 can have more points in it than the estimated atoms in the universe. Okay. So that's a big tree, a big, lot of points. Now, why are we imagining this tree? Because in the situation of, let's say, if you want to have your own blockchain and I want to have my own and let's say uh, i'm bitcoin and let's say you're ethereum if you don't have a lot of um, ego in your ethereum you feel like maybe you want to put it on Tora and you want to really get something to work so bitcoin would be let's say 31 uh, 51 levels why 51 levels because two to the power 51 yeah, yeah. is equal all the satoshis in the in, that they could ever be created in 21 mm -hmm. million bitcoins there's uh, by definition every single packet is at level 32 I will not spend time to explain why it's level 32, but just take it granted that's not something you can divide. Nobody can divide that packet. You go up to 51 levels, you end up at level 83. So let's say with Ethereum, you go up like, you know, um, 64 levels and you end up at uh, level 96. Mm -hmm. But the packets themselves, I can exchange them between any user. I don't really need to depend on any one in the middle. The packets, they're all at level 32. The same way, like if I were to send you a bunch of packets in, on TCP IP. It's not like you have different kind of mechanism of dealing with things that we have to depend on third party to okay it, you know. Um, it's not exactly the same, but kind of like similar concepts. Like we, we're, we're, we're getting towards uh, security first, uh, and that's how we're able to achieve that. Uh, so yeah, so that will have unique uh, number but what is that? Imagine it is a file, okay? The packet is like, imagine it's a file. That packet can contain uh, data in it. Mm -hmm. So the history of it is inside it. It's not sitting somewhere in a ledger that is sitting outside of your territory or whatnot, which also can satisfy a lot of folks' demands that they have certain like uh, privacy uh, uh, control in their nations and things like, no data shall exit Belgium or whatnot. Well, you know, you don't need to have it exit uh, Belgium unless you're sending it outside of Belgium, you know. Um, so if it's, uh, if it's your data, it belongs to you, it sits on your device, you want to have certain backup you can. Mm -hmm. You want to have it shredded backup, you want to have it uh, uh, encrypted shredded, you can do all of this stuff. 
but by design, it sits with you. Deployment can make it, can give you whatever backup, whatever needs. Uh, yeah, yeah. and you can you do a, each front end as you wish. I yeah, mean, yeah, exactly, like exactly. For, for example, wallet yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like oh, this. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, if you look at Ethereum today, every single dApp on Ethereum can benefit from taking it and putting it on, on Tora if they really want to take it mainstream and uh, build something that can actually be uh, efficient, secure by mm -hmm. design, and uh, you know, reducing the cost and not necessarily just the fees. That's another thing that we're still struggling with a lot of folks, although we repeat the same statement 100 times per day. Cost is not the same as fees. Yeah. I can give you an application that shows you so-called zero fees, or the gas is only 20 cents per smart contract execution. But that's not the cost. The cost is about 100 times more than that. The cost is that, how do you calculate the cost? Well, you add all the components that they run all the transactions and you just like divide them and find out what's the cost on average per transaction. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to do that? Many people, they say, well, as a user, I don't see that. Well, as a user, you don't see that in American Express either. When you use American Express, it actually pays you 2%. Mm -hmm. let's, let's make sure that we separate reality from what we see and what folks they want us to see and give the people what they really... Uh, like the transparency that they that they really need, and not just hide things, and, and we end up all hitting the wall. It's not it's not good for us, not good for everyone. So yeah, so that's basically what. Uh, but Torah, you don't have anything hidden. If there is anything that move, and you want to move any object in this universe, it's gonna there's a cost. Yeah. With Torah, if you do the, move it, you'll see the cost. The cost and fees are exactly the same. Uh, how do you put the deployment? If you have want to have a deployment, you want to absorb the cost from the users, it's up to you. But by design, it's there. Okay. It has to be there for proper crypto economics to work. What is about, uh, we talked about how it's designed. And uh, what is about use cases? Now you um, grow up ecosystem mm -hmm. with different businesses which will use Tota Protocol to have... Uh, could, could you explain your plans? I mean... Uh, when it will be possible to implement your uh, API? Sure. So and about ecosystem then? We're uh, opening up things by stages to give them to the world. There isn't uh, anything eventually that we're keeping just ourselves. There are a lot of reasons of why we do things in stages. The first thing that we're doing, we're giving the entire Toto protocol to a foundation called the Tri Foundation. And the Tri, the way it spells, kind of like the, the, the Tri in... Uh, like the whole binary tree structure when you actually build a try. Um, in, in cryptographers, you know what the try is, but it also stands for like Toda Research Institute. It's kind of a cool name, you know. Um, cool for geeks like me, but mm -hmm. it might not necessarily be cool for everyone, or like us, I should say. So once that is uh, handed to the foundation, and foundation is going to go and say like, world, this is free. Everybody ca can use it. However, the foundation needs to find a way to actually sustain itself. Uh, a lot of folks figure that model before. We're not going to reinvent the wheel on, from that perspective. We just use a model that uh, worked in foundation. So that's from that perspective. From business perspective, this is something actually super cool to hear. Anyone who thinks that they have a better model than Tora will use it and will make more money. Mm -hmm. So all of our businesses, they depend on this thing is going to work. Uh, we know it's going to work. We're monetizing on what we know and what the rest of the world they don't know yet. Mm -hmm. That's what they think it works. Some of them they're skeptical. But there's that gap can be monetized on. That's what we're doing. Um, so why yeah. we're doing that? Well, I mean, we're like any homo sapien. We're, we're, we're driven by greed, fear, and need, and we're incorporating altruism to that equation. So we're not hiding anything. It's like, oh, well, we're doing it because... We're not going to make money. Well, no, we are super open about our, there's separation between our business and the protocol. Mm -hmm. The business, if we give it to the world and tomorrow somebody figures out a model that this 60 seconds of blog, they're going to do it in six seconds or they have a better model than Tora that it's like, oh my God, it's like they r literally went and changed the CPIP for it to do it better or whatnot. We'll use it. All of our businesses end up using it and end up making more money. So... 13 businesses building on Toda today. We're expecting 20 in the next uh, Toda day in San Francisco that also uh, that came uh, about November 12th. T 21. We will be also there. Oh, 21. Right on. 
and uh, and uh, uh, that, that it's, uh, it would be pleasure and an honor to have you guys. Uh, and and that was an organic one. We were actually we we're not expecting having Torah Day in, in November. It'll be in San Francisco, I think, uh, November twelfth. We haven't confirmed the date. Uh, but by next May, we were expecting 50, but at the rate of things are going, we're going to end up with 100 companies building on Torah. Um, yeah, I mean, I encourage everyone who's really looking to uh, satisfy, uh, you know, or, or trying to actually take their application uh, or taking their own blockchain or want to build their new Ethereum mm -hmm. to start looking into how you can build it on, on Torah. You want to, uh, we're already working with a lot of folks uh, from Bitcoin, like I said earlier, and uh, I will not uh, disclose all the details, but when it's ready, they'll be able to disclose it themselves, mm -hmm. and it's uh, quite exciting. Uh, we we uh, truly believe in this uh, mission to be brought to everyone on the planet and not just a portion of that 0.2%. Uh, everybody can benefit from it. Self-sustainability is something to be proud of. If you're enabling, um, the, the, like for example, if you go to Madagascar today, it doesn't matter what electronic system you give them doesn't matter what it is. Every single electronic system that you give them, in, especially electronic money system, through every transaction, there's an extraction of wealth from Madagascar to the outside. So but if you quantify they? that, yeah. it ends up being over 90% of the money that is on the ground in three years extracted out. That does not help them towards prosperity. That's actually reduce their chance towards prosperity. In the world we live, we had better chance than them. So that is not cool. But not, it's not only that it's not cool, it's like, oh yeah, you know, so you want to go and save Madagascar and save the 3.5 billion people, the poor ones, but not. No, it's not about only altruism. Like I said, there's an, actually in the equation, there's a lot of greed. Mm -hmm. Where's the greed? Well, imagine 25 million people in Madagascar today, only 10 million of them, they have smartphones. Mm -hmm. How about in 5 to 10 years, all of them, they're buying fridges, cars, toasters, and all of the stuff, and they're getting services, whether it is financial services, whatever it is, they become prosperous. They become prosperous, they become uh, wealthier, they become happier themselves, so you know, I don't want to say happier, that's very subjective, but they become uh, more capable of uh, sustaining themselves, uh, paying for their own medical and uh, taking care of their own children and all that. Maybe, philosophically speaking, somebody would be like, yeah, well, that's going to introduce a new problem. The father of a three-year-old is going to struggle if they're going to buy them a new iPad every birthday they have. Well, yeah, that is pro a new problem. Um, but certainly is better than today's problems that every day they're struggling to feed those children. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you know, if we're working towards that, I think it's... Uh, it's better. There's not a single blockchain today that can actually provide those to the unbanked. Oh, let's go bank down bank. Well, we don't want to bank down bank. Perhaps we want to unbank the bank. Perhaps we want to provide folks with true financial services, the ability to provide those financial services, provide users the ability to be self-sustainable. And not only about banking, we're talking about all the promises of blockchain. Self-sustainability is huge. So what do I mean by that? What do they have in Madagascar today? They have smartphones, network, and people. Mm -hmm. That's it. They don't have servers, miners, uh, cloud, uh, databases, insurance companies, and all the stuff. They don't have any of that. So if your system is going to need anything more than th those three, you need to measure how much extraction of what it's going to do to run. And if there's going to be a lot, maybe it's not good for them. Um, and if it's, not so self if it's not sustainable, then it's not going to run for long. Um, so what we're pr trying to provide folks, if you want to build systems to address nations like that, instead of building it on things that they don't have, build it on things that they have, and that's what Toda provides. All it needs to run is the people, the smartphones, and uh, the network. It is a network protocol, and it's enabling all of the, those cool things. Imagine 10 million devices, Madagascar running their entire infrastructure of banking, of uh, registry, land registry, car registry, and all of the stuff. But how they will earn, they will help the to the bank system, but how they will earn the benefits from it? You mean the people? Yeah. Well, imagine if the 10 million people, they're running their own infrastructure, yeah. that it's not leaking out of their, their country anymore. So they can, when they're having changes between each other and whatnot, uh, it's what they have is what's running it. It's like water pipes. You install a water pipe, you pay for it once. Mm -hmm. And the more water you run into, it's not going to pay more water and but more money to who, run water. Who will pay? Uh, the banks? No, no, no. The people, yeah. they run it on their devices. The people, they 
receive small part of that system, call it like let's say mini mining or whatnot, mm -hmm. they would be running the entire system. If you provide financial services to them, you go there and be like, hey, they become pros prosperous, I want to go provide them with certain things that they would need, uh, you know, from financial services or from selling them fridges or whatnot, that's a business that you can run. Okay. It's, uh, so it's small uh, commission from each transaction. It is a, a bit uh, commission that will go to the miners. Like uh, there's uh, no miners. It's each and every user, as you're participating into the system, you're participating in the original design of the mining, where you're taking, where you're doing certain. Uh, I shouldn't say the original design of mining, but like basically the, uh, the idea of uh, having to maintain that system in a crypto e economy, you need to have an incentive. So that incentive can be very small, not necessarily that big, but it gives you the incentive to keep your device on as mm -hmm. much as possible. And if it's not on, you just like, you don't necessarily, uh, it's not absolutely needed for every device yeah, to be yeah. on. It's like if one, uh, like I said, it's Byzantine fault tolerance. So if one out of 32, of the devices uh, they're on, the system also work. You know, okay, yeah, work, yeah, uh, yeah. Work very well. If they're not on at all, for whatever reason, uh, you won't lose any of your money or your assets or anything. Uh, like the state of the system has to be that each and every thing that is signed cryptographically to you is owned by you and no one else. If you transfer to someone else, then it becomes owned by someone else. Yeah, okay. And for you, like a business, uh, again, uh, what is the benefit, main benefit? It, so the businesses, for example, if you look at each and every business, they're doing certain thing of service. And that service, as it, you provide services, for example, in uh, Mind OT, it's, um, it's a uh, joint venture between Mind AI and mm -hmm. Toro. Uh, the service that is being provided is an AI uh, engine that you can license. That's what's being mm -hmm. built. And by licensing that, what does it do for you? Let's say you're an executive assistant. The average executive assistant in the United States gets paid $3,500 a month. The, exec the average executive assistant, they spend over $100 in tools online that help them do their work. If it's an extra $10 a month that can actually optimize their work by 40, 50, 60, 70%, 100%, you know, 200%, will they pay for it? That's what's being studied as we speak. The greater the percentage of benefit, the more likely that that uh, product is going to be needed. Will it be marketed properly and all that? That I don't know. We're not at that stage, <coughs> but at least we're at a stage of building product that is needed by people that you can use that. And that is, <coughs> is built in a, in a decentralized way that you don't have to give all your data and all the management of your data to a single company to manage it, to provide you with those services. Mm -hmm. Instead, it uses the brains of about 100,000 people globally in a decentralized way where well, they have a tiny little incentive in, in crypto economics. Uh, those brains, they kind of work together uh, synergistically with the machine. They keep making the machine smarter and the executive assistant will be getting some of that brain. But it's also, it has a lot of uh, cool machine learning elements to it that as that executive assistant uses it, the more uh, it learns from it, the system learns from the executive assistant as well. Uh, so it's uh, just, uh, I'm just explaining one, yeah, one of the yeah. businesses. There's so many others like, you know, records on Tora, there's an identity, you base on Tora and so on and so forth. Yeah, all I think that with such a, we will uh, go through all of the cases. Just Yes. Yes, like land yeah. on Torah is super exciting as well. You know, all of those, their businesses, uh, they're, they're being built on Torah, Toda Q, financial. Some of them, they come in and they try to do it with the existing blockchain mm -hmm. with the wall. Some of them, they uh, decided to start it directly with uh, Torah. Uh, the ability to have the scalability, efficiency, and security and confidentiality by design and interoperability bring new, uh, you know, new ideas to people's minds yeah, that they yeah, want to yeah. do and what they, what they can accomplish with this technology. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. So we can make a conclusion. So uh, Tora protocol, it is not blockchain system. It is like protocol. Uh, it's a network protocol. Which will help other blockchains or other businesses to make uh, f five main points. Yeah, it is first security. Then we go to efficiency. So at security level, we uh, organize, we um, provide the much security system with uh, totally decentralized government mm -hmm. governance. Mm -hmm. And then efficiency. 
it is more efficient than other systems mm -hmm. that exist now, existing now. And then we go to um, confidentiality. confidentiality. It is we, we then I think we talk about it because you have two possibilities: be confidential or not to be, mm -hmm. be confidential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And confidentiality, then scalability. Then scalability, scalability and then interoperability. It is like we can uh, make uh, millions of transactions per second if we will have millions of devices. That's right. If you, the more devices you have, yeah. the more you need it. It scales up and scales down as you need it. And, and all of those, they're by design on implementation level. If you were to build, if you want to have deployments on top of that to have you know custodians you want to have all kind of stuff that's that's totally cool you can do whatever you want the intent of the technology is to really enable folks to build on top of it something sustainable to bring the promises of the blockchain to life and uh, that uh, idea of self-sovereignty mm -hmm. and uh, irrefutability immutability and so on and so forth so um yeah i mean we're yeah. doing our part and we're hoping uh, folks will do theirs and together we can all uh, win. Okay, and to show uh, the uh, viewers uh, how it works, we can take the photos, because mm -hmm. photo it is information packet, yeah, mm -hmm. and say that it is one Satoshi. Mm -hmm. And each one knows that you have this photo. If, if you give me this photo, I will have this Satoshi. Mm -hmm. It That's is right. like, yeah, like right. an explanation and, of and how In the way, it works. if I were to send it to you, there is, it will always impact something global. But nobody, uh, no, the world doesn't necessarily know that I sent it to you, but you will have the proof to the everyone in the world. No, it's about it. We, you will have the proof, but nobody mm. in the world, they don't know about it, which is not necessarily like the, repli the replicated ledger. Mm. Everybody mm. knows about it. So, like, for example, if that Satoshi's number is like, let's say, 777. Yeah. And inside that packet, it says, Tufi owns it because he receives that uh, yeah. ownership from uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, sent it to Tufi. Yeah. And signed it, and it's like, okay, now it's sent to Tufi. Tufi takes it and uh, sends it to Lev. My signature, as I'm sending it to Lev in whatever block of time, so let's say at 1.36 p.m. Yeah. 1.36 p.m. on the 27th, everybody on the planet has that block hash will have that block hash mm -hmm. so there's one replicated truth for in, in each and every machine which is the actual block hash it's about 32 characters basically it, it goes propagates on every single device every minute so if you were to take that and you want to send it to uh sasha tatiana natalia whoever you want to send it to uh, natalia will have that hash that happened at 136 p.m. Mm -hmm. on the 27th of August, even if you were to send it to her in January, she knows that this transaction impacted the creation of that hash, mm -hmm. contributed to what that hash is, and you couldn't have faked that. So immediately she knows that you own it. But in the same time, uh, you're able to sign it to her, and then from that point onwards, she's able to prove to everyone globally. So that proof is basically you're able to prove it to her, it will prove everybody in the network. Mm -hmm. But will she know on her own? No. Nobody would know that on their own, that you have that packet at the moment that I give it to you. You have to be, tell them. So let's say it is a government agency that Natalia is, and you decide to tell gov that government agency, you can have a smart contract that every time you receive something, it tells the government. It's up to you. Yeah, interesting. It's up to the people at the end of the day. Do you want to comply with your laws or not? If you don't comply, you end up mm -hmm. having problems. If you do comply, it's, up, it's all around the user. Yeah, it is about confidentiality. Again, you, so here we could be like confidential, totally confidential. That's right. Or show uh, the transaction and what Correct. The deployment can actually yeah. make it a smart contract that can yeah. show other people. Nice. Yeah. So, okay. And... Um, uh, now you're building ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You create ecosystem with uh, different businesses which uh, will use uh, the protocol. And um, your business is like IT company which provide. Uh, Not IT company. I would say it's, like, it's more like um, you know um, we're like startup co-founders in all of those companies. Like if they mm -hmm. want to partner with us and we partner with them. So it's uh, uh, sometimes it's referred to as. Uh, double layers of startup factory because uh, we have the layers it's called privacy shell mm -hmm. and we have another one's called the the the, the toda network uh, it's more like uh, 
decentralized buffers in our, in our own, so that's kind of a way we built it. But with that, it's like, imagine you want to build all the stuff that you told you on, on Toto. You can do it on your own, it's all free, but if you really want to have a partner to build it together, yeah. you can go and find a co-founder who knows a little bit more about it. Uh, we, we're trying to be that co-founder yeah, yeah. and then try to help out with folks and, uh, and, and get them to something a little bit faster yeah. and sooner. Because uh, if you wait uh, uh, too long, you end up missing on the yeah, opportunity, that time, the opportunities right time. now. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so and small blitz right now. Uh, what is your favorite uh, coin right now? Or technology, I mean, in blockchain system. The, the favorite with, with crypto, with crypto. The favorite uh, technology in crypto. Yeah. Okay, so if I were to tell you that, a lot of folks would think that it's like, oh well, we thought that this is gonna be working instead of that, but it's not. So, for example, Lightning Network. Mm -hmm. It's Lightning Network is never ever to be compared with Dota. Lightning mm -hmm. Network actually works really well in a world that Dota exists in. Uh, or uh, state channels, Ethereum, they call it, whatnot. Um, so, you know, the, those kind of uh, technologies are super cool because they take things off chain because sometimes you need to take a, a, a open yeah. up a channel, take it off chain and do certain things. Um, and uh, we do have some implementations that they would want to use that, like, for example, for small devices that they're actually doing certain things that they're mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily uh, an actual device that belongs to the person. Could be your fridge and your thermostat and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, at this point, I mean, you asked me now like this, but if you were to ask me later on today, I might have another one. I do like a lot of things. A lot of folks in this uh, um, space they do phenomenal things. Like a few years ago, the BIP32 was fascinating. There's uh, a lot of s stuff that happens. Uh, uh, they start uh, with often with uh, Bitcoin innovators, and uh, okay. there are a lot of smart people that you know. Okay, like let's choose a Litecoin, for example. Hmm? Oh, li li Lightning, Lightning, okay. Lightning, okay. Lightning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lightning. Sure. Lightning Network. Lightning. Yeah. Okay, and uh, coin. If I like. A yeah. A any any crypto. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, uh, could you name the top three persons in crypto in crypto market? I, I don't know if I if that would put fairness for other folks. I probably wouldn't necessarily top uh, say the top three, and then it's like, oh, hold on. I thought I'm on the top of your top three or whatnot. So I prefer uh, not necessarily to mm -hmm. no, top okay. three. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you if you were to give me the choice to give you the top thirty, it would make it a lot easier. <laughs> okay. But then I will send you that list. Okay. But top three, I think, it's unfair to the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or. I think there are a lot of uh, great folks who do mm -hmm. phenomenal, phenomenal work out there. You know, you can find them, some of them they're in academia, some of them they're not. And uh, it's uh, the combination of work that they're doing, sometimes they're on different sides and whatnot. Sometimes they, are, they don't really care about sides. And uh, like uh, Amin Gonsire is known to people do going, oh, he's on like a Bitcoin cash or whatever, or he's on the Ethereum side, but he's not. He's just like into uh, the, the, the whole uh, mission or or, uh, you know, Nick Sabo, or uh, these people, they really uh, help build of what mm -hmm. we have today. They've been around before uh, the whole uh, hype of blockchain, even before Bitcoin. Yeah, I've yeah. uh, even reviewed some of their work and also some of the new folks like Andrew Miller, Miller is doing great stuff, uh, LNG, and uh, uh, there's a tremendous amount of uh, work that is being done on uh, inside the Bitcoin teams as well, but uh, I will not mention any one of them because again, like we kind of don't like yeah, each yeah. other and we like everyone we're trying to do. at something, it's more like literally when you want to compare Toda to something else, it's better to think about it this way. It's like, would you want to compare electricity with the fridge? Probably not. Compare fridges together. Toda mm -hmm. is more like electricity, okay? So, it's, yeah, uh, so anybody who wants to help with electricity is good for all fridges, you know? Okay, and uh, blockchain, is it a system is made uh, for people or for uh, for AI, for example? What do you mean? I mean, it is like new kind, it is a uh, next step in uh, evolution process. Oh, yeah, in, in general. In yeah, the world. In well, general, you know, <coughs> I actually argued several times that like blockchain is a component of AI. Not a lot of people, they like to admit to that. But if you think about it, if I were to give you a system that can run by itself, pay for itself, uh, um, you know, have governance over itself, defend itself, and so on and so forth. 
and uh, I tell you that can you go and create the system in your AI lab or whatnot. Many people just say yes, that's AI, uh, especially if it's uh, able to incentivize people around it to evolve, evolve it and all of this stuff. But then I tell you that, that system existed nine and a half years ago. It's called Bitcoin. People are like, oh, that's not AI, you know, and it's a calculator is not AI now, but it used to be called AI before we created calculator search, same thing, you know, all of the stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So it could be. I mean, it is like one puzzle, one yeah. own part in puzzle of AI, because it is, I think that it is like um, private mind for AI blockchain, because it is unique. You can uniqueize uh, their mind, because AI without blockchain, yeah. it is like something we, which could be. It's a necessary your element, yeah. yeah. In, so the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, if you were to look at um, AI in a way that it's going to be um, autonomous, mm -hmm. running its own thing for itself and incentivizing people around it, and it's like, uh, you know, we don't necessarily need to be very subjective in building AI to be like human. Yeah. It doesn't really need to eat food. Airplane doesn't really need to fly like birds. Yeah, yeah. Submarines doesn't have to swim like fish. It can always have a, its own way of doing things. So when we're building AI, uh, or even getting to the uh, time of like uh, uh, AGI, artificial general intelligence, mm -hmm. um, doesn't have to be like human-like. Yeah, no, no, you know? exactly not. It just doesn't. It's just like that's very subjective yeah. way of, you know, if, of making it. And uh, we might get to it even sooner than we think, and we're not going to even recognize it. I mean, we're so subjective seeing things. I mean, we argue all the time, what's AI? And we define it to what it is. Five years later, the same people that they said, yes, so 80% of that, they changed their mind after five years because we've already evolved, we understand it better. Like, that's not AI, that's only run, runs a couple algorithms or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of people, they like to say, it's like, oh, we don't have... Uh, um, artificial intelligence, we have artificial stupidity, whatever, you know, like, it's like, if you want to be objective, I think uh, AI has been evolving much more rapidly than a lot of people think. Um, AI will get to be much smarter than uh, Homo sapien, if it's not already. Um, but it's not necessarily like human-like intelligence, it's a different kind of intelligence, like, you know, searches, memorizing things, does already that a lot better than any human. Predictions, holy moly. Uh, the ability of comprehending data, uh, crunching data, all of the stuff. So those that were called intelligence before, like, oh my God, this guy's so intelligent, they would do all this stuff, or that girl is like so smart. And now it's like, oh, the machine can give you better than that. Well, okay, well, maybe that's intelligence, but it doesn't have to be, and it is artificial intelligence. But the, when they say, when they start saying like human-like, well, maybe call it a human-like intelligence. But if you want artificial intelligence, it is artificial intelligence. It's not necessarily human-like artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay, so, and last thing, it is from my side to you. Oh my God. Test. What's this? It is like a Man. jacket for Crypto General. Just that is so cool. Can I try it? Yeah, of course. Man, thank you. I hope it is your size. It's like so cool. when you collect all of this crypto, you can buy the Lambo. It is when Lambo. Amazing. Great. Yeah, it's your size, yeah? Awesome. Perfect. That is so cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks so much. Placebo.